What's up, everybody? Uh, been a while since I've had a progress report to show you guys on the Rigging Master course. Uh, so I wanted to show you this lip rig. Um, it took me a little bit longer because I wanted to really push all the way down and add the complexity um, that I felt was important to show. So I'm basically testing the system to see how it worked out. Uh, overall, I'm really happy with the results. So um, I'm going to show you generally what's going on here. So let's see. So we have our lip rig. And what I've done is I'm using command regions. Um, it's an option inside of Moto that allows you to tie controls to specific um, sets of geometry or faces. So for instance, I click this, and this allows me to move the lip, both lips up and down. I click here, and it's going to allow me to move just the upper lip. If I click here, I can move just the lower lip, right? So it it means that I don't have a whole, have to have a whole bunch of locators in my face to be able to do things. So I need to undo that. Um, but let's take a look at all the controls just so you see what I'm, or understand what's going on here as I'm clicking on stuff, right? So we want to be able to move our lips up and down. We want to be able to move our lips forward and backward, okay? Side to side. We want to be able to curl them forward, curl them backward, right? Now you'll notice there's a little crunchiness here because I don't have the I, I didn't author in the shape corrections. The rig, it's in the rig, um, but I, did, I didn't author them. Um, being able to do like a squash and stretch type action with the lips there, and then breaking out that squash and stretch into the three component pieces. So I want to be able to flatten the lips up and down, of course, I need to flip that control. Um, being able to move the front part of the lips forward, you see that I'm, I'm doing that, um, versus the back part of the lips doing that. So it just gives me the amount of control that I want, depending on how we want that squash and stretch to feel with the lips that we can do it. Now, to make this effective from an animation standpoint, I need to be able to break everything down. So this is great, right? I can move all of the, the lips in a single control. Um, as you saw earlier, I can lift up um, forward separately, side to side. So I have all that control um, on the individual lip level, um, so upper and lower. And then what you really need to be able to do when you're dealing with phonemes and you're dealing with talking and expressions, you want to be able to really control how the lip works. So that means I've broken these things up into zones. And here, let's do this. We don't actually need to see any uh, values. So now I can, you know, bung this level up and then I can move over. So I can either double click on this and then be able to move this one, or I've set up um, pick walking. So for instance, I go here, um, if I arrow over to the left, now I'm gonna be able to pull up this piece here. If I keep arrowing over, I can you know, adjust these here individually. <coughs> and I'm part of my voice. I've been sick the past couple of days. <coughs> um, so now, and then if I arrow down, I can do the same thing lower. So now I can play around with this. And each zone, um, I can do all these different effects too. So I've just been moving up and down, but let's say that I want to move just this part forward, right? So now I'm moving just this lip forward. I can curl just this piece forward or backward, right? I can squash or stretch the, just that piece. And the way the rig is constructed, is that when I mung the up lip all the way up, I'm actually putting values into all the different zones and moving them up as one piece. There are actually five different deformation effects that are adding up together to, to give us the one, the one effect. But you can see right now like how much control we have and even being able to invert the edges here so that I can uh, give really sharp or you know um, tight lines or rounded lines at the edges. Um, you know, with the cartoon character, you know, our faces can't make these kind of shapes. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see that, you know, we've got all this kind of control and then I can go back up to this top one here and I could curl everything out or in um, and do this kind of a thing. So pull the lips out, pull them forward. So this really, I'm, I'm really happy with what Moto is able to give me, which is complete control over the lips. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit of how it works. I'm not going to get into it too, too deeply because when we go into the, you know, actually rigging this bad boy, we'll, we'll take a look at that. So let me go here to a different version of the rig, and I'm going to show you kind of how things are structured. Um, and please don't be, uh, don't be overwhelmed by this. Um, I will be teaching how and why. Um, and more importantly, 
because of the way the training is going to be set up and the way the rigs are going to be set up, if you don't want to learn how to master rig to build these, you won't have to. Um, part of the deal is if you get RMC3, you're going to get these rigs. Um, it's going to be a non-commercial license, but you'll be able to use these rigs and, and animate whatever the heck you want to animate. So you'll be able to choose whether you want to master rig, which can be intense, um, or just take advantage of the rigs I have and fit them. And I'll show you how how this all works real quickly. <clears throat> so this shows all the deformers. And the key is, is that we've got a different deformer for each section. So you've got, you know, the center and then the left and right mids and the left and right ends and the left and right edges on either side. And they're actually individual deformers or, you know, influences with effectors that are creating that. And it's that way for every single thing or action that we've identified here. So that means up, down, forward, backward, curls, all that are all separated. But to make them all play nicely together, what we've done is using these um, fall offs. Let me turn on the rig here. I'll show this to you because I think this will help illustrate some of these things. So um, actually, I went over here. Let's do that. Sorry, I jumped between the rigs. But I think you'll get the point across as I deselect and reselect and and all that. Okay, so what I've done is you can see these waves here as I as I point to the screen. Um, <coughs> each these waves are all crossing and working with each other. So that means that by using fall offs that cross each other, if they have the same exact length and they have the same exact arc, in this case I've told them both to be smooth, that means that if I move two deformers and I move them up and they're using those same fall offs, the point in the very middle is going to be half of this one and half of that one. If I move over a little bit, maybe it's 0.4 here and 0.6 there and whatever. And it, it mathematically adds up so that it all moves up. And then what I do is I take a weight container, make one weight that I wire into all these guys, and that fades everything off so you get that nice clean line when you move things up. So that's, that's how this is structured. So all of these um, deformation effects are carved out through the, these seven fall-offs. So there's more than that there, but there's seven zones, right? Um, and then no matter how many of these guys I add in, how many layers, you know, up and down, forward and backward, side to side, they're all playing nicely together. And if I adjust the width of the um, fall-offs, and that means that, I, let's say I want to have the end a little tighter than the mid, I move that over with these fall-offs, and everything is going to cascade down and work, which is really cool. So now let's take a look at, you go, okay, Rich, this is freaking insane, insane, and my, my mind is blown. I totally get it. But let's say that you just wanted to use this rig. You didn't um, want to um, master rig it. So what you can do is, and this is the beauty of weight containers. So I've got my weight lift on. So if I take this rig, um, <laughs> I really need to stop switching z z my things here. So I take this rig, I pick it up, and I, and I move it, right? So I can, oops, let's go into setup mode, <laughs> right? So I pick this whole thing up, and I move it and I fit it to where I want. So I got a new character with a different size mouth, different size character, I pick it up, and I set the zones where I want, right? And then I add weight into just this one weight container. Let me turn off rollover so that it's not distracting, right? So this is just my up lid, lip, this is my low lip. These two weight containers are wired into everything. And because Moto has the uh, concept of weight flow, which means I can have multiple weight containers plugging into the same influence, and if there's no weights on the ones above, then it just passes right through them, which means I can make an overall weight container for the low and upper, which I've done here, that flows into everything. It flows into the up and down, forward and backward, left and right. And within a day, seriously, if I had all of the rigs done for this character's face, I could get the face moving and working reasonably in one day. Imagine that. Imagine being able to have feature film quality rigging in a way that you could literally get it moving and working in one day. It's not magic, but it's pretty close. <laughs> and that's what this does. Now, what, what it doesn't do is give you full art direction and full control, make sure that everything all plays nice together. So let's say you needed to go up to the final, you know, to the nines with everything. Then you have all your individual um, weight containers. So in this case, I don't make something special for up, but I did have a special one for forward and a different one for side. 
and a different one for curl. And the back curl and the forward curl are different weights. So I can go in and then refine my weighting. And then on top of that, you do your shape correction. So you go, all right, I'm going to curl it up. But now I want to take my, I want to, it's basically a morph influence. And you go in and you make your shape change. And because of the way the deformers are set up in Moto, all of that one morph influence is carved out by the same zones that are in the fall or the same fall off zones that I'm using for everything else, which means you do one shape correction for up and it will automatically increase and decrease that correction amount as I move the individual pieces as if I did all of it at one time. So I'm probably got a little complicated in the description. Basically, I can have seven carved out pieces, but I only have to affect one morph correction for everything. Now think about the power of that. Now I play around with the the width of that fall off. So let's say I want the center to be a little bit longer. I don't have to change the, the morph correct because it's all being multiplied through those fall offs. So anyway, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm very happy with the controls I have here. And I think you guys are going to totally love being able to choose whether you want to just fit these rigs and go, or if you want to learn how to make them from scratch or do both. Um, it's going to be pretty cool. So anyway, Sorry it's been so long. I, I really wanted to take this all the way down and push the system to see where the failure points were um, and also see if I could get the level of control I wanted and, and I've been able to do so. So anyway, you guys stay, stay frosty.